Our last demonstration is going to involve the external force being in tune with the natural frequency of the system again. So let's go back to that. We have a mass, damping, and spring constant. And currently we have zero applied force, but the, if there was a force, it would be applied at the same frequency as the complementary solution. So we'll change this to one. Think about what it'll look like before I press go. There we go. We get the resonance condition where the amplitude is growing with time because we have an overlap between the solutions and we have T and T as a result in here. That is the linearly increasing amplitude as time goes on. Now again, that's an ideal because that will only occur when we have no friction. Now, if we look at our coefficient of damping here, it was zero. What if we put a little bit of damping in? What do we expect to have happen? Well, we wouldn't expect a dramatic change, that's for sure. Let's just make sure that is the case. And indeed, we do not see a major change. We still see amplitude growing, but the math is quite different. Now, because the complementary solution has negative exponentials times cos, even though these frequencies are not actually exactly the same, they're really, really close, but we would never get an overlap because these are pure cosine signs. Those are different than these ones here. We don't need that leading T anymore. So what's going on here? Well, let's extend the time frame again here. Ah, so let's go back to the no friction case. There we just get growth, 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 growth. And it maxes up in this time frame around six point something, seven-ish. But if we put a little bit of friction in there, notice we're in a much smaller scale. And instead of growing forever, because there is energy dissipation and because we're moving quite quickly here, the dissipation is happening at a higher rate, we get amplitudes that max out in some sense. They don't grow forever. They settle down to some quite large, but still a finite amplitude. So the math looks quite different, but the behavior is quite similar, certainly in the early phases. And again, depending on what you're looking at, if things broke after you reach an amplitude of this, then it doesn't really matter if things settle down later because it's already busted when you hit here. What happens if we dial up the friction some more? Well, like you'd expect, we'd get less strong response, more energy bleed. Notice the amplitude here is only 0 0.8, 0 0.6, but we still see that capping of the amplitude. So it grows fairly quickly and then sort of plateaus. We can dial that up to one or something, which would be quite coarse. Notice the amplitude is much, much smaller now by order of magnitude. So if there's a lot of damping in the system, we still get oscillations that go on forever, but the maximum amplitude that we reach is much lower. So that's going to be our springboard for the last topic about the spring mass system. We've talked about overlapping solutions and resonance. We've talked about what happens when we add some friction to make it more realistic. But you'll see that we get this interesting behavior at the beginning that's somehow different from the long run behavior. I want to take a quick look at the mathematics behind that before we wrap up this model.